Rock 108. Hey, it's Ned hanging out here in the studio again because, well, a lot of us are kind of stuck in this quarantine situation. We're all stuck drinking coffee and bands can't go out and do their thing. They can't go out touring. They can't do a lot of the normalcy that happens in like a good summer, like big festival or something like that, right? So instead of going out and doing big shows, they're putting the, the thing in their schedule called well, hang out with Ned. Better go do that. So that's like their number one thing that they're looking forward to. Am I right, Tony? Am I kind of on the ball yeah, there? You, you know, he got moved up the list. Okay, that's what I thought, man. Cool. <laughs> I've got Tony Campos from the band Static X and just let's just say an illustrious awesome music career too. Tony, how's it going, man? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. Can't, can't complain too much. I will say you look very relaxed. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite things. Well, I, I I literally just got out of bed like half hour ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that coffee thing that we were talking about, that's probably something you're probably needing right now. Yeah, you know, uh, I do not do coffee. No? I what do you do to wake up in the morning? I, I, just, I just force myself out of fucking bed, man, you know? <laughs> like, uh, are we on the air? We're not on no, the air. we're not on the air. No, you're good. We're, we're being recorded. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, like, I, I just, like, if I'm really dragging ass and and, mm. and I need to get up and get shit done, I'll, I'll chug like half a five hour energy drink. That'll do it. <laughs> normally, yeah. N normally, I'll, I'll just fucking just get up and let nature take its course. You know. And and so you don't need any outside stuff or anything well, like that. Well, so you... well, it's not that I don't need it. It's just mm. that I I never like the taste of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like all my sisters, like they they love the shit. Mm. You know, but I just, I never got into it. It's one of those things that's like, you can't, like, you drink one and it's like, uh, it tastes like tar or something like that. Maybe you just need like one good cup of coffee that maybe like your sisters need to brew for you or something like that and be like, it'll, it'll maybe change your life from that point. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, either way. <laughs> so I'm looking in the background there and I mentioned this when we were off the air here for a little bit. You're, 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 you're jumping in my world, man. I see Xbox controllers. I see the Doom, uh, the Doom poster. My guess is that you fall under the gamer world. Yeah, I. Uh, that, that, that's uh, my other uh, obsession, you could say, uh, music and video games. Uh, you and I might be like cut from the same bread, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's my thing is music and video games. And uh, when I'm not, music is here at work every single day. But when I go home, it's either one of my, like, maybe I'll go from like Atari one day, and then maybe I'll do like some Xbox One or PlayStation 4. But Doom right there, man. Oh, my gosh. What, that is yeah. such a wonderful game. Yeah, and, and, and talk about, you know, bringing those two uh, obsessions together in, in mm. one package. I mean, the soundtrack for that game is unbelievable. Man. That's, they nailed it, knocked yeah. it out of the park. I, I had that thing on rotation for, like, you know, six months. It was mm. so good. And, and just, I forget what the composer of it was, but he posted up a lot of like the performances of that, of some of the songs out there and yeah. just like watching like the close-ups of the guitar and the bends that he was doing. I'm just like, this is cool. Yeah, no, Mick's awesome. Uh, I, I finally got, got to meet the guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he was doing the soundtrack for the follow-up, Doom Eternal, right. he, uh, he gathered up a bunch of uh, death metal singers Mm -hmm. uh for this choir of hell that he was doing and he asked me to be part of it oh or, dude. or rather i should say i asked him to, <laughs> if I could be part of it yeah uh, and um yeah it ended up uh coming out on on the soundtrack for doom eternal and that was an awesome experience see being you as a gamer as you are being involved in a video game and when it's the music and such too that had to be kind of like a small dream come true type of thing yeah totally man i mean doom is one of those franchises that you know, i've been following since you know i was i was a kid mm -hmm. uh, you know i remember the first time i saw it uh i went to a friend's house and he was playing it on uh on his pc you know and i was like Dude, what's that mm -hmm. and uh yeah i've been been in love with the, that series ever since and, and the music is so important to doom too because if you like listen to like the, some of the original ones the inspirations that they kind of draw from it like you hear like alice in chains you hear some stone yeah. temple pilots you hear pantera it's like the music i mean the gameplay the blood and the and the, the the hellscape that it is but unless you have the music to it man it's just like it's just another shooter yeah no the, the, the combination is just like killer yeah, man. So what games are you playing right now? Obviously, Doom Eternal is one of them. Probably done with yeah, that. But yeah, what are you yeah, playing yeah. right now? Uh, I've been... 
I was really hooked on Destiny 2 for a while there. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, lately, these, these last two seasons, I've kind of been, you know, out of it. Because uh, I started playing uh, Doom Eternal. Right. Uh, and then um, they've been re-releasing all the uh, Halo games on PC. Yeah, they have. So I've been doing that. Um, just finished up uh, three mm-hmm. uh, last month, I think. Um, and uh, what else have I been playing? Oh, I, <laughs> I, I just, like, a couple months ago, I, I finally finished up the main campaign for uh, Resident Evil 7. Oh, dude, that game is so... Did you do it in VR by chance? I started it in VR, mm-hmm. but I hated the control scheme. Yeah, it's like a little it, kind of thing. It, it felt really tanky. Mm-hmm. Like, like, uh, like I'd have to do this and then, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not, not, not that the control scheme on on regular is is that fluid mm-hmm. compared to the VR version. It's way more tankier. Right. That's I. I didn't get to play it on VR because I haven't bought a VR headset. I mean, at some point, I probably will. But yeah, I just love. They're cheap now, you know. For right, yeah. I mean, when the first came out, it was like what 300, 350 yeah, bucks. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's a little yeah. steep for a radio dj man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i picked one up on ebay for for cheap but uh there you go um yeah the, the um it was really cool like during the 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 regular moments you know mm-hmm. the er just yeah exploring the halls and doing that but once you got into like a combat situation it sucked man oh it felt like you couldn't get out of the way mm-hmm. you know, you couldn't defend yourself. It, yeah, so I, I I played about a third of the game in VR, and I was like, mm-hmm. man, fuck this. I'm gonna go try it on just on the on the on the screen, and and it was much more enjoyable. I just turned out all the lights in here. And, yeah. Perfect. That's how you have to witness Resident Evil, especially seven, because it's just again that immersive experience. I, I'm assuming that since you said Resident Evil, you've tried the remakes of two and three at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I for I I forgot to mention those. I, I, <laughs> when that when three uh remake came out i, I spent about three weeks on that <laughs> yeah and then i went and revisited uh the two remake mm-hmm. just because I, I i don't think i ever finished uh the the last uh playthrough with uh with the second characters right yeah and finish that mm-hmm. you know and I will say, man, with those those remakes, first of all, they're amazing. And the Resident Evil engine that they built for it, that was built for seven and they just did that for that. But something about the way that they designed Mr. X in Resident Evil 2, man, it's just like, yeah, that thing is terrifying. When you hear like the footsteps, like maybe in the room above you or something like that, he just never yeah. stops. I'm like, that is pure <laughs> fear. And they blew it out of the water with that character. So good. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they did an awesome job with the, with the remakes for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. So we can sit here and talk about video games like all day. I mean, <laughs> I'm, even my tattoo, I got a, I'm working on a sleeve of a kid sitting in front of an old 80s uh, TV with a Nintendo 64 on it. I mean, hell yeah. So we got to chat about, of course, the brand new uh, Regeneration album that just pretty much dropped. Um, so that all, it, it's been a long time coming. It's been coming together. I got to see the wonderful tour with, uh, with Dope and Mushroom Head. You guys played at Woolies in Des Moines. Wonderful show. So cool to see. Um, I mean, what's kind of happening with that right now? I mean, because with the whole coronavirus thing, kind of like pushing everything all off. I mean, what were the plans? What was supposed to happen? Give me some inside. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, the, it, the, the record was supposed to come out, you know, the last year mm-hmm. uh and you know one one of the delays was like we we had it done like uh, a few months ago um prior to to the actual date we released it mm-hmm. but we couldn't do anything because all the manufacturing was shut down Oof. so <laughs> <laughs> well we have it it's done but we just can't make copies for everybody right. <laughs> throw it in the burner we'll start just send it out man <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that sucked I, and and you know like it, it, we'd already delayed it a few times and, and I, I know we pissed off some fans and i was just like fuck we got it it's done man we just yeah i'm you know, sorry it was a little frustrating but uh but now that it's out and um you know it, it seems like like uh everybody thinks it was worth the wait so mm-hmm. it, 
Yeah, people are really attaching to it. I mean, Static X fans have been, I mean, ever since like the late 90s, early 2Ks, whatever it may be. I mean, just like the albums like Wisconsin Death Trip, it's like one of those definitive albums that like when you think of that era of music, Wisconsin Death Trip is like top five easily. I mean, that's just falls in line with that. So seeing that you guys all kind of came together to pay tribute to Wayne and uh, Zero, the wonderful lead singer of the band too. I mean, just seeing the show, it really felt like Wayne was was there. It was like, whoa, what is this? And it's so cool to see you guys kind of come together and really pay a wonderful tribute to Wayne. Yeah, that, that, that was, uh, you know, the goal was how do we uh, give people that that Wisconsin Death Trip Static X experience mm -hmm. um, and, and give them, you know, that flashback of the first time they saw the band. You yeah. Know, seeing Wayne with his hair and saying, well, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I, I think the fans all... all got it you know yeah yeah everybody had a good time and you know for us personally it was a, a bittersweet experience but mm -hmm. um it 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 felt good to to get to do that with with kenny and koichi again you know? yeah no it, it was kind of a flashback for me i was pretty close up front during the whole thing and i'm just like whoa this is nuts man <laughs> it's cool to see um you know regeneration is out obviously you can pick it up in wherever you can buy cds nowadays or obviously amazon or something like that but is there when you went through the music to kind of pick what you could find is there more out there like is there a possibility of like a regeneration too like what's what's the possibilities of that i mean that's obviously really soon because the album just came out <laughs> but just kind of some speculation i guess well not really because uh we've been announcing uh that volume two is coming out uh oh. and we're working on it um go me right yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean we're, we're working on on that uh volume two right now mm -hmm. uh, but i don't want to give a a release date or a tentative release date because we already pissed off the fans for the volume one saying no oh, it's going to come out here and then you know right yeah yeah so i don't i don't want to give anybody any false expectations uh but we are working on it and um you know the goal now is to keep it consistent with uh volume one mm -hmm sonically you know, production wise um and make sure we can um you know make these songs on the same level as uh volume one yeah absolutely man that's cool here man i'm looking forward to it now obviously with the coronavirus uh, kind of taking over and keep probably keeping you out of the studio at this point which sucks um trying to keep that on time and it's probably a good idea that you don't say like this date because with yeah, this whole yeah. pandemic man yeah it's hard everything to is so life. unsure <laughs> you can't plan anything totally. yeah so as for touring i mean obviously a lot of you guys a lot of the bands a lot of stuff had to be pulled off of touring things had to be delayed and whatnot but you guys recently took place at that uh uh, at one point it was called the herd immunity <laughs> festival or something yeah. like that how did that kind of go from the band perspective uh, well, that thing had had been on the books for like six, eight months. Mm -hmm. And so as things with the virus developed, um, it was still on the books. And, you know, our booking agent um, assured us that they, um, the promoters there were going to take all the necessary safety precautions. Mm -hmm. And... And we were gonna do everything we we could to make sure we were safe. Um, and I, I mean, look, we're not medical experts. We're we're dumb musicians. Right. <laughs> we show up and play. So if you know the health officials of of Kadot, Wisconsin, um, you know they say it's okay. Then hey, you know who who might argue? Yeah someone who has far more education than I do. <laughs> you know, and that's one thing with the internet and, and social media, it seems like everyone has like a doctorate in, in, uh, right? in yeah. medical. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. What? Yeah. You know, if I have a medical question, I will talk to my doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The guy that went to school for like 19 years right. to understand how this kind of thing works. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, if I want my house rewired, I'll call an electrician, you know? I don't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so obviously, you know, one like of the, the experts, you know, it's, exactly. Leave it up to them, man. They're the ones that get paid the good bucks for this kind of thing. Exactly. We get paid the okay bucks because we decide to go into the music world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's not so much the pay, but, uh, the, the fringe benefits are awesome. Right, yeah. I mean, like, we just get to play music all day, hang out and chat with stuff like that. I mean, hey, it could be totally worse. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Regeneration 2, in the works, Herd Immunity Festival, done. So, what exactly is Tony doing while hanging out at home? I mean, I see video games. We all know about that. But what else is going on in the yeah, world, Tony? Well, well, the way I got, I got this room set up... Um, you know, that, that half of the room is the video game side. And then this half of the room is the, uh, the work music side. So right. I don't know. Let me see if I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got Ooh. My, my old Fernandez, uh, some, uh, some guitars up on the wall over here and a drum kit over here. So oh, damn. I, I work on music on, on this side of the room. So. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of squeeze in there. You make it work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, um, I don't know if you've ever thought about doing this, but have you ever thought about doing like live streaming, like on Twitch or something like that, a video game playing or doing like some guitar stuff? Uh, no, I mean, um, uh, my, my buddy, Mark Rizzo does the, the live stream mm -hmm. jamming uh, on Twitch and he, he says he seems to be doing okay with that. Um, I, I mean, right now I, I, I have like a lot of different things on my plate not not just music wise but uh mm -hmm. the, the the house um you know i've i've been slowly renovating this place for the past 15 years and I'm down, oh, to two, yeah. down to two rooms yeah <laughs> uh, so yeah that's that's the next thing is uh to start working on on one of these rooms here to to finally get get this place fixed up you know mm -hmm. so it doesn't fall on me yeah yeah, this house was built like in the uh, what is it, the nineteen tens. Whoa, no way! Yeah, so it's got some miles on it. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, so like you know, I've slowly been you know, renovating it over the years, and uh, it's finally kind of looking like a modern house. So. It's piecing it together. I, I yeah. just bought a house uh, about three weeks ago, my very first house, and. I, mine's from the 1970s. It's a tri-level and it's like, I, I've never done like normal house repairs. I've always lived in apartments. I just call the landlord. I'm like, Hey, this is broken. Come fix the damn thing. <laughs> and I'm learning a little bit every single day that when you have a house, you don't, you don't just like go, unless you have like some sort of disposable income, you don't just go in and fix it all right then and there. It's like it, you do, you put it in the, we'll get to it column. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and then and what you'll learn, the uh, like I did the hard way is that the there's always something, man. Yeah, <laughs> there's always something. Uh, <laughs> even like when I moved in, the first thing I said I was like, we had the water heater was like put in there in like 1984. I'm like that's got to go, and it was making sounds, it was leaking in spots. I'm like, it's gonna blow up. Uh, we that has to go, and then the washer and dryer, and then like some GCLF outlets or something like that in the uh, in the kitchen. So I've slid my credit card more times than I want to recently, and then I said, I think we're done. But I realize I'm like, no, I'm in a house, and you're never done. Yeah, it's always something, man. Like I just had to replace my entire fuse panel. Oh. Wow. Yeah, because I, I, I kept blowing uh, breakers, and and it, so so the electrician would come over and just like have to keep moving stuff and 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 you know connecting things that shouldn't be connected. But he was mm. like, "Well, I'll, I'll get this. Will get the power running, but you'll eventually blow blow this one too." So I I did that for a few years, and I was like, "Fuck! All right, enough, man." Yeah, time to just. <laughs> I'm, gonna burn, I'm gonna burn my house down if I keep doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> And then there goes all your work that you've yeah. been putting into this house because you yeah. just replaced that one thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's the next project in Tony's house? <laughs> uh, well, I, I got two rooms left, the laundry room and the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen. Is last, gonna be, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a big, you know, not, not, not just a lot of work, but you know, the significant bite out of the wallet. Mm -hmm. So, 
I, so I might do the laundry room first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to make you feel a little bit better about it. Yeah, yeah at, least, at least I'm getting something done, you know? <laughs> yeah, so countertop wise, are you going granite countertop? Because I've been told many times, like, you should invest in granite countertops. I'm like, that's like a billion dollars more than I want to spend right now. Yeah, it's pretty pricey. And um, I, I've, heard, I've heard there's some synthetics out there that, that work just as well. So I don't know. I, when, okay. when I finally commit to doing the kitchen, I'll, uh, I'll really start doing some research on that stuff. Something and I didn't plan on doing. And the laundry room is just, just going to be easy. I just need a coat of paint, mm -hmm. uh, get some uh, new cheap linoleum flooring, done. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you're not living in the laundry room. You're just there exactly. to pop it in and get the hell out. So you're done. Exactly. Okay, now we're, I've never thought I'd be sitting here talking about home repair with the basis of Static X, but <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Anything can yeah, change any single day. Like I, I, I've gone full-blown Bob Vila on, on this place, man. Like this room in here, actually. Um, I, the, the, I, from this wall back, mm -hmm. It, it, all the walls are, are old plaster. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and on this, uh, on the other side of this wall, there used to be a bathroom and this used to be the main wet wall mm -hmm. for that bathroom and it leaked. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you could literally go to this wall and push it in and out because the plaster was, you know, full mm -hmm. of moisture and stuff. So I decided, fuck it. I'm going to knock down all the plaster walls in this room mm -hmm. And it made the biggest fucking mess, like, like dust everywhere. Oh, you know, the whole fucking house, man, just dust everywhere. And I was like, I'm never doing this again. It's like having a cat. Every single where you go, it's like it's hair. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I, I got I got three of them running around. And yeah, they're just hair everywhere. Yeah, you end up with dust. Like, I've been trying to get used to hardwood floors because I've had carpet my whole life. And then all of a sudden, like, right now, the cats are still trying to get adjusted to the house. So we got to keep the litter box, like, kind of close where they kind of spend time so they don't peel over the place. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One little piece of cat litter on a hardwood floor. It's like, well, clearly I got to clean the whole floor now because I stepped on this one thing, man. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> so we can sit here and talk about, once again, yeah, right. all this video games and static right. games. All right. One of the things I got to ask you, because now I'm like, well, I got this opportunity, is um, I used to follow you in Fear Factory for uh, the few years that you've been hanging out in the band. And according to the wonderful, reliable world of the internet, it says that Fear Factory is still in motion. Is there any truth to that statement? What's kind of like the status of that? Uh, I mean, I, I, I really can't speak for Dino and, and Bert. I mean, it's their band. I'm just a hired gun for those guys. Uh, but from what I've heard, um, they're, they're still in the middle of all that legal shit. So, yeah, you know, uh, and I guess until that gets solved, um, I don't know what, what they can really do, man. It, it's, you know, such a, such a fucked up situation, man. Cause that, that last record they, they put out that Genexus record was fucking awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's too bad that like, you know, I mean, that's one side that I think a lot of people don't see, you know, they see bands and records and that's what they see, but there's always so much of like the business aspect, which is probably to fans like, Oh, that's so boring. But you know, to the bands and, and the way it kind of works, it's like, there's a lot of paperwork when it comes to some of these things. And it's just too bad that some kind of stuff gets kind of locked into like a legal battle. Cause you obviously want more music and you want to play, you want to make music, but it's like, there's always that business side of things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the thing. It is the music business. And yeah. If you want to make a living out of it, you, know? you got to sign papers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is going to be a fun little question. And I know we're probably getting, pre I'm getting pretty close cause I'm uh, don't want to take up all your time. We can sit here and talk about home repair and uh, video games yeah. like all day. <laughs> but I've asked this question to so many rockers with unique hair, like, Jonathan Davis, I asked him about his uh, dreadlocks. I asked Randy Blythe about his his hair. Even recently, uh, who was I talking to? Well, regardless. But he, um, your, in, in the different case, your hair comes down here. <laughs> so I guess the question I have is, how long has it been since you would have a clean, shaven face? Um, well, uh, as far as the beard, mm -hmm. 
I think I started growing it in 97, 98, maybe. 97, 98. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I only ever like, you know, the, Obviously, once I hit puberty, uh, I I never had a clean shaven face because mm-hmm. uh, I always had a mustache. But I I shaved the mustache once. No oh, man. And um, it's funny because uh, my baby sister had never seen me without my mustache. No oh, man. And I think she was like nine or ten. Mm-hmm. I just when I said, nah, fuck it, let me shave off the mustache. Yeah. And she flipped out, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who is this? Go to your face. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was funny because like I I I had this like white strip of of, of untanned skin like on my oh, on man. and I was like, Oh, I'm never doing this again, man. <laughs> this was <laughs> stupid. <laughs> baby skin under here it's fresh yeah, yeah. In the sun yeah right it, it, it was literally like this yes yeah. see how white my my upper arm is compared to the, yeah it was literally like that a strip of white above my <laughs> lip and i was like oh man this is dumb i'm not doing this again <laughs> <laughs> and it never changed it, so yeah no 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 more uh clean shaven face for for this guy that's awesome man so keep it the way it is because now it's i think it's like a trademark you could probably trademark your beard and and your well, face I, I don't know um you know because um the uh the beard i i have to give uh credit or responsibility whatever you want to say mm-hmm. uh, i got to give that to carrie king oh he, yeah yeah he told me how to grow the beard really yeah because before before i took his advice it it was kind of it, it wasn't like this it, it was a little smaller a little shorter up front um and of all places we we were at a backstage at a Queensryche show okay uh, they were playing the house of blues in anaheim hmm. and we were both hanging out backstage and, and uh and he taps me on the shoulder and I'm like hey, oh hey carrie what's up and he's like you're growing that wrong he points <laughs> at my chin i'm like really he's like you got to grow it from back here Oh, yeah, because I like at that point I was only growing it like at, from like the edge of my chin, mm-hmm. and he's like, "No, you got to grow it from back here, like down by your throat." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay," and so I took his advice, and here we go. And the legend was born. Yeah, you know, so like you know, when, when people say I look like Kerry King, I was like, I, I just well, it's his fault. Yeah, he's the one who came it up. No, he, he told me how to grow the fucking thing, so take it up <laughs> with him. You know, if he, if he didn't want me looking like him, he wouldn't have gave me the fucking advice. Exactly. I think it's funny that Carrie King of Slayer is giving out hair growth advice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he could write a book about that. Yeah. Weird. How to grow like this. Beard growing techniques, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, all right, man. I, I won't keep you too much longer, but Tony, man, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I, the fact that the first thing I pop up, I see you in a Doom poster. I'm like, this is going to be good. <laughs> it's gonna be fun so uh tony is there anything you want the fans out there to know about anything maybe like some suggestions or anything about regeneration Two? whatever it is you have the red carpet for it um yeah just uh keep an eye out for uh volume two we're working on it and uh we uh we're gonna do our best to make sure it doesn't suck and uh we're gonna try to make sure we don't announce something and then have to delay it (laughs) welcome to everything right now Uh, exactly man awesome man well before we call today every single time i do one of these i always have to we because we post it up on rock108.com so we need a quick still shot of the photo for the blog so we can post it share it and all the instagram you know how those things go nowadays so um we're gonna take a three second still shot you can do whatever you want you can show off you can do a thumbs up you can do a smiley i don't care what you do but three seconds of however you want to be represented i'm the weird guy because i'm I have blue hair. I mean, it's typical. So, <laughs> so in that case, uh, whenever you're ready, I'll do it a three, two, one. Uh, let me see what I got over here. Eh, I got nothing cool. All right. In three, two, one. Perfect. Awesome. 
Tony, you're the man, dude. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the years of music you've been providing to my soul. I mean, it's, it's definitely been a pleasure hearing all the tunes that you guys churn out. Thanks for listening, man. Hell yeah, dude. Well, in that case, hopefully I'll see you on the next show at some yeah. point in our life. And I'll look forward to Regeneration 2. All right, man. Take care. All right. See you, dude. Thank you. Yeah.